everyone, welcome to my channel. I'll put down my landing pad. Well, I'm out here today to show you something really cool for the DJI FPV. So this is by Small Rig, and it is called the Aerodynamics Accessory Kit for the DJI FPV. So basically, it looks like this. Isn't that pretty cool? So you're probably looking at it going, what? What is it, a paint job, a color scheme? What is it? Well, yeah, sort of. So what you get in the kit is you get, I believe, three different color schemes. I've put one of the color schemes on. It might not look too good out here in the light because it's rather dull at the moment. It's very dull weather. It also comes with the cool shark fins at the back. You see them up there at the rear. That's for keeping your drone flying straight, cutting through the wind. I don't know if it works. It also comes with a mount for an external camera up here on the top and it screws right into the body. So this is nothing like those cheap, cheap, cheap 3D printed things you see people selling all over the place. This is the real stuff because everything screws into the body and they include the screws that are the proper screws to screw everything in. You know, the right length that won't mess up anything. So what else does it come with? A transparent cover for the camera up front. So it's supposed to be non-glare, non-everything. It's supposed to be a perfect transparent cover. So it keeps the nose more aerodynamic. You see the cover I have on it right now, that is just the gimbal guard and I can yank that off. So if you put on the transparent cover right here, well then, uh, I don't even have it on right, there we go. If you put on the transparent cover like that, then uh, yeah, you can fly and your camera is, well, semi-protected, I guess. And uh, does the image work out? Well, I have no idea. I haven't tried it, but that's what this whole video is about. So your next question is probably, how did you put everything on your drone, Steve? Well, I don't know if that's your next question. I'm just assuming. So I took this kit and uh, I took everything out. There were no instructions. That's one thing that's very odd. There's no instructions that come with this. So if you buy this kit, how about you watch this video and I'll show you how you attach everything. A lot of you remember I had my green canopy on top that says Captain Drone. So I had to take that off to put this on or else I'm putting the stickers over this. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you everything that comes in the box super quick in my Captain Drone method. And I'm gonna show you how I attached every single thing onto this drone because like I said, there's no instructions in the box. So watch this video, it won't be very long and then come on back to me and we're gonna go and test this out. Here we go. All right, for this unboxing and setup, first we have the box and I will say that the box is extremely well packaged. They paid big bucks to have this professionally made. It looks really good. First thing in the box, you're gonna find your stickers. You have three different sets of color schemes for your FPV drone. You can see I use the middle one. Next item would be the transparent aerodynamic cover for the nose of the drone. And I should mention that the transparent nose attaches to your drone via double-sided tape. Next would be your camera holder made out of precision molded plastic. Finally, you receive two sets of tail fins and all the necessary screws. And now let's get to the fun part of installing the stickers on the drone. You can see I have two canopies, one already on the drone, which is green and a spare one. So I'm gonna install the stickers on the spare one. It's pretty simple, just tear them off the sheet match up the screw hole so it fits nicely do that on both sides and then match up the center piece and you'll see everything looks awesome just like this the same is true for when you attach the stickers to the rear arms just match up the lines on the stickers with the lines on the arms and everything will look like this to remove the canopy, you just have to take out eight screws, four of them are in the front and two on either side, then pry off the top. And please note that you do not have to take the canopy off to put the stickers on. You can put them on while the canopy is in place on your drone. Now you will have to remove the side screws to install the external camera mount and then install the included much longer screws. Here I'm installing the stickers on the forward arms. It's the same idea as the rear arms. Just match up the lines on the stickers with the lines on the arms and everything looks nice. To install the tail fin, remove the four screws in the rear put the tail fins in place you'll notice they're marked to left and right then use the included screws which are much longer to secure the tail fins in place next comes the tricky part of putting the tail fins into the holders here's how you do it you have to put the tip of the tail fin in the holder first then push straight down it's the only way it goes in trust me I've tried it many times it works they will stay in place quite securely they do give you two sets just in case you crash and one of them goes flying out welcome back now just in case you're wondering it does fit in my case with no problem with all the accessories attached I'm gonna power this on here we go get it going I love the sound it makes when it starts up come on there we go now a few people ask me hey if you put a camera on top does that mess with the compass no it doesn't the compass is over in another area over there it's not at the camera the only benefit with this dull weather is that when I uh, do the camera comparison of the camera 
built into it compared to like a GoPro on top, you'll see the difference of the camera quality and what it can do. I don't know what the results are going to be, but we're going to find out here. So let me just fly this over to, uh, there's a GoPro over there. There we go. Drone getting close. Should be in the GoPro. And let's take it over to my professional camera over there. Professional camera. There we go. Probably not focusing on the drone because it only focuses on people. I can't believe it. It is starting to rain right now. I've got water on my glasses, but uh, it's not heavy rain. It's light rain. Eh, I'll take the drone flying anyways. Here we go. That is not looking too great out there. It's so dull. And so on the camera right now, the EV is zero. I'm going to boost it up. There we go. It's brighter. So when I fly, you're going to see I've put the EV setting at plus one. It's just because the exposure is really dull. It's so friggin' dull out here. So uh, yeah, so you'll see that. All right. So all this test is right here. So I'm just going to fly it and see if I notice any difference. I've got everything on, nothing exciting. Just the kit is on, the fins, the stickers. Uh, I've got the GoPro mount or whatever mount for camera mount on the back, but nothing's attached to it. I just want to see if everything flies as it should. Here we go. Really quick. Here we go. Hit the button. There we are, motor is starting and we are going to launch it. There we are, manual mode should be recording automatically. Now, a lot of people, when they get this drone, they think they can fly in manual mode right away. Well, you can't, unfortunately. You have to learn how to fly acro. So I'm doing manual right now. So here we go, let's come down. Oh, you can see the water droplets getting on the lens already with the rain. Yeah, and people are probably saying, why are you flying that in the rain? I don't mind flying FPV drones in light rain. I won't fly them in heavy rain, though. So here we go up. Nice slow turn. Let's bring it over to me. There we are. Sensors are telling me there's an object in front, which would be me. It's where the beeping's coming from. But uh, there we go. It's just so you can see it in the, in the actual camera. GoPro's over here. There I am. Bugs flying around me. Uh, all right. So let's put it over on the landing pad. I'll put it sideways so you can see it. And let's just go down. I think I'm over the landing pad now. Let's go all the way down. I could be close to it. All the way down. Got it. Woohoo! All right. Next thing we're going to do is uh, put on that clear lens over the front. Once again, with the raindrops, it's going to mess it up, but we're going to see if it changed anything in the image you just saw. So let's do that now. You can already see the clear lens. There's water droplets all over it because it's sitting in my case there. Can you see it? <laughs> can, can the camera make me out uh, through this thing? It is very clear. I'm going to clean it out as best I can, and then we'll all stick it on and we'll see how it works. All right, first up, let's clean our lens. I have the clear plastic lens. The small rig lens cover is over top. You probably can't even see it through the light. It's so clear. So we'll see how it works. Hopefully it doesn't start raining again. The rain seems to have stopped right now and uh, we'll give it a shot. I've got it clean. You can see where the camera is. The camera's clean and the lens is clean. I've, I'm going to leave it on EV plus one that I had the other flight so you can see and compare if there's any difference. See if you get any glaring from the sides. The sun is kind of dull uh, shining over there. See if glare comes into it because that's what you don't want. But if it stays and looks good, well then it's, it's supposed to be really good. And once again, the reason they made this is because they said when the drone flies, it's not aerodynamic because, well, you know the way the nose is, it just captures all the air right up front. So with this thing on, the air is supposed to flow over it. Obviously, I think you would take off this portion uh, to make it aerodynamic because if you leave this on, well, you're sort of defeating the purpose. All right, let's go try it. Double tap and uh, let's take it up. All right, so this is flying with a piece of plastic over the camera. So there we go. Do you see any difference? Do you see any glares coming in from the sides or anything? I'm just going to do a full circle here, see if you can see it. Just keep circling. Do you see any distortion in the lens? I think I see distortion. I do see distortion. Look at what I'm going sideways. It seems like yeah, it seems from left to right. So you'd have to have this at uh, not wide angle. Perhaps it was designed for the purpose of you put the camera on top and you don't record with this camera. But then that defeats the purpose of aerodynamic. Am I missing something? I don't know. Here, let's go this way. Do our little flippies upside down. Go over here and looking down at the water. All right, I'll bring it back. How does that look? Everything look good? I'm assuming it looks good. So same thing, I'm just bringing it over. This is with the plastic lens on the front. How does that look? 
in the video. There I am right there. I'll come closer. Coming over here. Uh, you can see it in uh, one of these cameras. We'll pick it up, the GoPro or whatever. All right, so let's put it down on the landing, the pad back here. Right over here. All right, let's bring it down. Oh, what did I hit there? <laughs> it blew the landing pad sideways or something. It should be blue, but it's orange. There we are. So <laughs> look what it did. It chopped up this, chopped up that. Yikes. All right, for this next portion, I'm gonna take off the plastic portion, uh, the lens, because I don't think we need it. We've already seen it. So I'll take this off and I'll put a camera up top. All right, so this is a bit of a dilemma for me because normally when I fly an FPV drone and I put a GoPro on an FPV drone, I always put the angle of the camera to match that of the pilot camera. But on this drone, the camera angle is kind of weird because of how it flies. You see how it looks like this? Well, it's got to tilt like this to fly, right? So I'm going to guess it probably tilts like that. So that means my camera should probably go like this. Let me just pull it back. Um, this is a big guess on my part. I'm going to guess it flies like this to pull itself through the air. So in order to keep the camera looking straight, it's got to be like that. That's my guess. I could be totally wrong, but uh, we're going to find out to see if the cameras are pointing the same angle. Anyways, this is just a try. Let's try it. So I'm going to change the EV setting back to the default to make it fair. It's going to look worse than you've seen previously when I was flying around because it's at zero. This is the way most people fly this drone. It's zero is perfect for a sunny day, but on a dull day like today, it's not good. But the GoPro has the same settings and I'm not going to adjust it. The GoPro is at zero. The drone is at zero. Both of them are going to see the ground, see the sky, and expose for either. Uh, hopefully, I have the GoPro at the right angle. It's just a big guess on my part, but here we go. So, uh, let's, uh, is this powered up? Yes, it is. Now, it's going to be pretty heavy flying with a GoPro, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So, let's put it into manual mode. There we are. And uh, throttle sticks are good. Tighten. Motor start up. So, it's going to be a little heavier when I take off, so I'm going to ram it forward. Here we go. Actually, it's not heavier. I don't even notice the GoPro. And I don't even know if the GoPro is pointing anywhere near uh, forward uh, or is it pointing at the sky the whole time? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to uh, land it and check out the footage. But here we go. Just in case it's doing correct, I'm going to ram it fast forward. That means the GoPro, the whole drone has to tilt forward big time right now. So it should, the GoPro should be looking kind of straight when I do that. Or it should be looking at the ground, one or the other, because this thing's got a tilt to go super fast forward. All right, I just rewatched the video on my GoPro, and I can tell if you put the GoPro in line with these lines here, that is wrong. It is too far upwards. So I'm going to push it forward. There we go. It should be more like this, I think. I think that's it. Like that and then it will be more identical to the camera up front. So I'm just gonna take it for a really short second flight. Here we go with the GoPro tilted more like this. Here we go, second flight with the GoPro readjusted, put it back in manual mode, tap, tap. Motors start, everything should be recording, and here we go. So let's take it really fast. Now my GoPro is facing more forward or downward, so it should see a similar image to what I see with my drone camera. So when I put them side by side, you should see both are somewhat similar. I'm keeping it low because now I think it might match up nicely. Whoa! <laughs> oh my God, that was close. Yeah, I gotta watch out for these uh, things. Now, one thing I wanted to check out, or at least you can check out watching this video because I'm gonna see it as well, is, uh, you know, how is it for smoothness? Now, the GoPro has a built-in smoothing software that will uh, adjust the image so everything looks smooth, as well as the DJI camera, except the DJI camera is not as good as the GoPro. And now there's people over there with dogs, so I'm gonna stay away from them and go over here. All right, so this should look pretty darn decent. There we go, I'm just gonna go to the end. Oh, there's more people with dogs over there and uh, go over the water so we can get a nice look at that Ooh, there we go some nice uh, light coming through there cruising over the water and then we're gonna just bounce way up lots of power here and we're gonna come back to us there we go all right so hopefully uh this comparison worked out well to see which camera both of them ev settings are at zero so 
you know, with this dull, dull, dull light, uh, which would be better than for you for photography? Would you use the normal built-in uh, DJI camera or would you use the one that is on, or the GoPro here, let me just put it back in normal mode and bring it down for a fast landing. I have one more camera to show you, which is a 360 camera. And I'll plop that on. So let's bring it over here. Come on in for a landing. There we go. Oh, I think I moved my blue thing. Oh, well, we're going to find out. Going down. Coming down hard or soft? Oh, we're on an angle. We missed the blue thing. All right, just for a refresher, that's the angle I had the GoPro on right there for that flight. Hopefully that worked out well. All right, let's put uh, an Insta360, 360, 360 degree camera on it, and we'll check that one out. I'll try to put it at exactly the same angle. Next camera I'm gonna try on here is an Insta360. This camera has a lens on this side and a lens on this side, and when it films, it grabs everything from the back, the top, the bottom, the front, the top, the bottom. It stitches it together in 360, and when you're reviewing the video, you can move around the picture and pick any angle you want. So I can look back at this here, the fins at the back, the shark fins, or the nose, or the props, or anything while I'm flying, and that's what I'm gonna do. But I just wanna see how it works with this camera, so let's go try it. We have a little bit more light, uh, sunlight happening now, so the images comparison between the two cameras might look pretty good, but really not gonna compare it because I'm using a 360 degree camera compared to a typical, not even a 180 degree camera. But uh, anyways, here we go. So same idea, put it in manual mode. There we are, and uh, tap tap. And here we go. I see some people ahead of me that I must stay away from. So here we go. Now one thing to check with this here drone and the camera on top is if you get any vibrations because uh, DJI drones like this are pretty smooth but for the most part they do have vibrations that go through the actual body and when a vibration goes through the body there's nothing to dampen it. Now the camera on the front of the DJI drone, FPV drone, has dampeners all over it so it never gets vibrations or jello. But uh, this here Insta360 could possibly be getting vibrations. I have no idea because I have not seen the footage, but you're seeing it right now and you can decide if you see any vibrations or anything of the sort. So I'm just flying low and slow. Uh, the 360 degree camera, I can aim it anywhere I want as I'm flying here, so it doesn't really matter. I can look behind me, I can look in front, I can look all over the place. Let's go underneath this here tree. There we go. And I'll take it over the water again. Going back here, bring it down low. How does that look? Flying over water nice and smooth. And then I will bring it back to me. This camera weighs this camera weighs more than the GoPro. So you'll get less flight time than if you had a GoPro on it, I find anyway. So I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring it this way. I see no people in front of me. Nice clear path. And then we're gonna go down here and I'm gonna switch it into normal mode. And let's go into normal mode. There we go. And now I can bring it close to me. So once again, no issues with GPS with this camera or the other camera. It all seems to work nice. So now that I'm flying in normal mode towards me, you can see I can look around with the Insta360, check out anything I want. As I get close, I'll show you what I mean. Watch this, I can fly around my Jeep, but I can keep the camera locked on anything I want. So here we go coming towards me and going around my Jeep. There we are. Coming, 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 coming. Going towards the tree. And the camera should still be locked on me, even though I'm facing the opposite direction. Pretty cool, eh? That's the great thing about a 360 degree camera. All right, let's go plop it down on the landing pad. Put over here as best I can. And then all the way down. There we go, done. So I guess the next thing I have to do is actually review the footage because I really can't give you a decision at the moment. I didn't find any difference in flight. I could feel the weight of this camera. I didn't really feel the weight of the GoPro as much. Uh, the drone will fly better without any camera up top, but if you want, 
different types of footage you saw the difference you could get with the GoPro and with the Insta360 then you would put the camera up top so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go home I'm gonna watch the footage that was taken with this camera with the clear thing on the front uh, with the GoPro with the Insta360 and then review it and then give you my thoughts you've already seen all the video so you already have your thoughts but I haven't seen it yet so I don't know I don't know if it's actually really good so uh, let me go do that and then uh, come back to me in Indoors, and I'll tell you what I think. All right, I'm back indoors and I checked everything out. So really quick sum up right now. First thing is I love the paint scheme, the sticker colors and everything else. I have my little green thing over here that I used to have on the drone, which is pretty cool, but now eh, this is a change. And I have two other sticker patterns that I can put on if I want to change it up, which is a nice touch. I love the fins in the back of this baby. Those fins look so radical and so cool. Come on, you got to admit it looks so cool with the fins. It's really awesome. I love the fact that so many people online sell these really cheapy uh, 3D printed mounts for your GoPros or cameras that you stick up top. They're really flimsy and cheap and they look goofy and they really make your drone look bad. But this mount actually makes your drone look good. Obviously, if you're not going to use it, just unscrew this portion here and uh, take that off and just leave it like that. And only put the screw in when you attach your camera on top, external camera that you wish to attach. And the cool thing is you can attach any camera that you'd like. It doesn't have to be the two cameras that I used here. That was just two of hundreds of cameras you could actually attach to the top. Next thing is the clear piece of plastic that goes over the front. I did see some distortion ripples and that is because of the corners. So if I bring this close, I'll show you what I mean. Check this out. Here you can see the lens and look in the center. It's nice and clear, but if I roll it to the sides, you see that? See that little distortion right there? So that's what we were getting in our image. As soon as the camera goes wide angle or anything on the sides, it's distorted. So I could see it in the footage, even when I was flying slow, if I looked to either side, it looked like it was a little bit blurry and out of focus and I could see it too when I was flying around and around and around because the camera has to follow and there's some distortion correction going on but it was catching the corners and that's why you had the distortion ripple going through the whole image so if you're flying straight it's probably perfect but as soon as you start making corners or doing things like that eh, maybe you're gonna get that ripple effect so it's totally up to you if it's something you think you need next the external camera mount I love it I just love this camera mount as I've already mentioned and putting the GoPro up top was pretty cool the benefit of having a GoPro on something like this is because this here is perfect if you're flying straight and making smooth turns but if I do this and I jerk it to the sides any way you want then your image jerks to the sides and all that sort of stuff happens because in here even with the correction inside it only works to 10 degrees so I can only move the drone 10 degrees either way and it will keep the horizon level if I go beyond 10 all of a sudden my horizon goes like that you could see it in the video that's not the same on a GoPro Hero 8 you can go I don't know a lot farther than 10 degrees and the horizon just stays level it, the feature is built right into the camera so that's the benefit of a GoPro but overall, I will say that this camera here on the drone performed better than I expected against the GoPro. And the GoPro mount allowed me to put a Insta360, this thing here with a lens on either side. And that was super sweet because you saw the footage. It looked really cool. You can put any type of camera you want on this as long as it's not too heavy. And this thing will lift it because it's a 6S battery. It's extremely powerful. It can lift an awful lot. And did I notice anything different in how it flies with all this stuff on it? I didn't notice anything. It seemed like it flew the same as it's always flown to me, but I really do like those little shark fins at the back. Now, small rig makes this, and it's pretty cool that they make this because small rig, if you're not familiar, if you're into professional cameras, shooting video, shooting photos, you know, like a real professional, then you, you know who small rig is because small rig makes items for professionals. So I'm not a super professional, but I used to be in photography. And uh, so I have a small rig unit here. When you see me go out and shoot videos, I'm using a small rig unit. So on my camera right here that I shoot with, it's got a cage. That's a small rig cage here. I'll hide my face so that it focuses on it. And I have a small rig handle here. And there's your whole unit. This camera that's filming me has small rig stuff all over it uh, that makes my life a lot easier when I'm filming these videos. So small rig is a high-end company and the fact that they make this item for a 
DJI FPV drone is, is just mind boggling, but they do. It's pretty cool. Now, the good thing is, is this is not expensive at all. Wait until you see the price. It's very inexpensive. At least I think it is. Uh, one was sent to me for free and I actually bought one myself. You know, I saw it and I said, I got to buy that. It's so cool. And then about a month later, they wrote to me and said, hey, Steve, you know, we love your video channel, your YouTube channel. We'd like to send you one so you can review it. So that's why I'm showing it here now. So anyways, I, I think it's a pretty good product. So I'm going to put links below. Go check it out. I don't know if there's a discount code. I just sent them an email about two minutes ago and say, hey, the video's coming out. If you have something for Captain Drone viewers, then uh, give it to me and I will add it to the video. So if you check the links below and you see some sort of code for Captain Drone viewers, then uh, Small Rig came through. But it is almost the weekend and probably nobody's working, so they might not have seen my email. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to make. I always love flying the DJI FPV drone. I think this is one of the most awesome drones on the planet. I love this thing. It is so versatile for doing so many cool things. So if you have one of these, you might want to pick yourself up this here kit just to make it even cooler. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in a future video with many more reviews. Take care.